What's up, everybody? So you've determined you want to see stuff at night, but you want to do it in a cooler way than just using a flashlight, of course, obviously. So you clicked on this podcast because we're going to be talking about night vision and also thermal. This little series, I think we're going to call it New to Nods or something like that. Okay. So we've got Mike Griffin here. He's one of the instructors here at Vortex Edge. Uh, Jimmy speaking right now. I am not one of the instructors, but I do work down here at the range. And Mike's kind of our night vision guy, our in-house guy for all things nods. And he has, uh, he's developed and is always working on the curriculum here for our night vision class. Super cool class. Maybe we'll chat more about that here at the end. But uh, Mike, I know night vision, there's a lot more information coming out there on the internet now. uh, But it still can be a bit confusing for somebody who is new to nods. And I think a great first question to ask is, what is the right solution for somebody out there? And, and so we're talking about kind of uh, night vision versus thermal, and maybe you can actually even go into why there even is a difference, what even are we talking about, why is it significant uh, for somebody who does want to uh, want to use this device for whatever their application may be. And we may get into why there's different applications where certain ones are, are better. Uh, but what is that? Yeah, so um, I think it, it it is very much uh, context or application-based. Um, night vision uh, is generally broken down into uh, to two types. Um, uh, you've got image intensification or I squared. Um, so you may see a, an eye with a little two above it. Um, and that's the stuff you would commonly see in uh, like the movies where you you know somebody flips on a, a goggle or a scope and you get green uh, imagery uh, that's you know lighting up the darkness. Mm-hmm. Um, the other option is uh, thermal, um, and you can actually use thermal kind of any time of day, right? Um, whereas uh, I squared night vision uh, does not like really, really bright light. So like daylight, you wouldn't want to use it without protective caps uh, during the day because it could potentially damage the image intensification tube. Uh, thermal can be used uh, any any lighting conditions because it isn't um, actually responding to visible light um, or even light that is uh, you know, not detectable by the, the naked eye, um, like uh, I squared devices are. Uh, they're picking up on energy that's a little bit further right on the, uh, the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, so it's heat energy that's coming off of objects. Sure. Um, and it's picking, picking up uh, those differences between objects, generally speaking, that generate heat, um, like animals, uh, you know, us or four-legged uh, animals running around, um, or uh, in some environments, think like vehicles or uh, you know equipment. Um, Thermal is used in a lot of different industries, so obviously our context would be like hunting or recreational shooting. Uh, but if you think about like modern fire departments have uh, thermal imaging cameras that oh, they yeah. use to uh, both find fire or find people inside of structures um, that may be on fire, or if you're doing search and rescue, that type of thing. Um, and then there's industrial applications where it picks up, uh, hey, uh, you're leaking. Uh, heat energy uh, out of uh, space for insulation or a piece of equipment's overheated or something like that. Like all of those are different uses of thermal uh, right. sensors. Right. So, so <clears throat> night vision devices, so we'll call them uh, what you're referring to as the I squared devices there. Those would be ones where, uh, I mean, that's kind of the one that everybody thinks about when they hear night vision. Like you said, a lot of times they flip them on and now the image looks all green, or in some cases it might be almost now white. It's not quite black and white, but yeah, yeah it's, it's like a, it's like grayscale with a, uh, it still kind of leans toward towards a little a green hue. Um, right. Uh, and so, yeah, those kind of fall into two categories on their own. You can have 
generally speaking, the stuff that somebody who is listening to this or watching this would use would be head mounted um, or helmet mounted. Um, and then you can have uh, weapon mounted or mm -hmm. uh, firearm mounted uh, items. So um, either clip on devices that go in front of a daytime optic or devices that have a built in aiming system within them. Um, so they can only be used at night uh, or that platform really can only be used at night short of taking the optic off and putting another daytime okay. optic. So as an integrated reticle. Right. Um, okay. Yep. And really the only thing that those are doing is helping you see sort of everything a little bit better right yeah. they're not gonna make a if you're if you're on it in, in a hunting scenario they're not gonna make an animal appear more vivid than its surroundings or anything like that it still may be and I think this will kind of get into maybe some of the application is that if you're outside and you're looking at you know say a field with a wooded edge around it or something like that you're going predator hunting which i know is where a lot of people hog hunting things like that a lot of people are looking to do in the evening hours or at night uh, you're not going to necessarily be able to see like, oh, there's a coyote 400 yards away that's just bam popping out at me like that, right? Correct. So if uh, if you're you know going after something, whatever you're trying to identify, but in this context, hunting, um, and the animal that you're going after has natural camouflage, they're still going to benefit from that natural camouflage, uh, whether it's uh, daytime and you're trying to use ambient lighting conditions, you know, sunlight, um, or it's nighttime and you're using uh, image intensified uh, light because the contrast that they naturally have, their their natural camouflage, um, is still the limiting factor. Like nothing that your uh, image intensification device is picking up is going to make them stand out. Whereas with thermal, um, unless they, you know, have something going on that is shielding them uh, from you being able to to see them directly um, like bushes or uh, you know any like micro terrain that sort of thing wasn't there like, some movie where somebody was trying to hide from thermal imaging they covered themselves cover with themselves mud. with mud yeah so like anything that you can put any barrier that you can put between you and the sensor um, can that uh, is going to be neutral in temperature. So it's going to be the same temperature as the ambient environment mm -hmm. will offer you some level of protection from thermal. Okay. But as soon as you heat that barrier up, um, then, or if it were to like reflect, uh, and change in ambient temperature. Um, so like, uh, if you have something that is reflecting heat from some other source, um, or the absence of heat, you know, uh, cold area, um, then that'll that'll pop under uh, under thermal. Okay, um, it'll show contrast in comparison to the environment. Right. So um, so yeah, like when you look at an animal at night, it may have amazing uh, camouflage with its surrounding environment, but if you look at them under thermal, they're going to jump out as sure. long as there's nothing that's shielding them. Sure. Um, and even then, it's like it's got to be something substantial, you know, like a right. piece of terrain, right. that sort of thing. So what are like, what are, we've kind of gone into some of them already, but what are the pros and cons of each of these types of systems overall? I mean, pros of your, of your, I'll call it traditional night vision, you know, again, what most people think of that I squared type, what, what are your pros and cons? So when you talk about analog, uh, traditional night vision, I squared, the biggest pro that it has, um, is that it functions pretty close to like the human eye. So, um, it, while it is reliant on ambient light, it's also responsive to ambient light and, uh, supplemental lighting sources. So if I don't have enough light in an area to give me the image that I'm looking for, I can turn on light. I can't really do that with thermal. So like mm -hmm. there isn't like a, a thermal illuminator that I can turn on. Um, I also can't uh, use like a laser pointer under thermal. Um, so I'm oh, reliant on the device having some sort of aiming reticle or being used in conjunction with like a daytime optic to aim um, or to signal other people. So oh, if you think okay. of like using it in uh, you know, like a armed forces scenario, um, like thermal is great at detection, uh, but it needs to be paired with a system in the I squared realm to be able to like, if I like found a target somewhere and I wanted to communicate that target to somebody else, um, there isn't like a thermal pointer that would show up under somebody else's thermal. Sure. Uh, so I would have to have like 
uh, either a vis laser um, that I could point out with somebody, but right, then yeah, other and then you'd people have to like get out of the thermal imager yeah, and just be looking with your naked eye. Um, or I would have to have an IR laser that's attached to whatever platform uh, the thermal is um, that would allow me to aim, and then somebody with I squared night vision could see that um, and then get on it with thermal or I squared night vision. Mm -hmm. um, so it just gets a little more complicated when you try working with other people under under thermal. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, and with thermal, in theory, you don't need like a flashlight, right? Because it's showing me all of the um, different l temperature levels depending on uh, whether I'm looking at like rocks versus dirt versus trees uh, versus the open sky, like it gives me a lot of contrast and capability to navigate. Mm -hmm. um, so it does have that pro that like maybe I wouldn't need to light up the environment because the temperature differences provide me all the detail that I need to interact with my environment. Yeah. If you're like walking through the woods or something trying to actually navigate, because I know that I've seen sometimes where people have you know, you have night vision binoculars on their yeah. on their head via a, a helmet mount. You can see around like you would again mm -hmm. with the naked eye. Now, granted, and it is funny to say that you need some ambient light to make night vision work. I think a lot of people think it's it is true magic and that it doesn't need yeah, any light. Not quite. Um, but you know, then there's other people who actually they'll wear thermal on their helmet too. But yeah. if you're trying to navigate with that. Is there always enough temperature difference, like just in the ground? And let's say you're coming up on a hole or a log, you know, or the stuff that could trip you up. Um, so you could potentially run into scenarios where like everything is a very consistent temperature. Um, and so depending on the quality of the sensor that you're using, the device that you're using um, and what the uh you know, like ambient temperature conditions, like if you're looking at like a very consistent um, think like uh, you know, open air desert that doesn't have uh, a lot of brush or foliage um, and it's very consistent temperature, uh, you may have some definition issues there mm. uh, depending on the quality of your sensor. Um, the other issue with thermal is that it's a digital process versus an analog process. So there can be some latency uh, both in how quickly the image is presented to your eye versus what comes into the device, um, as well as the refresh rate. So, like, that's one of the things that is um, uh, a characteristic when selecting thermal is, like, what the refresh rate of the device is. Hmm. So, on the top end, generally speaking, you're talking, like, 60 hertz. Um, and very similar uh, if you think about, like, purchasing TVs. Like, you want a pretty high refresh rate um, so that there isn't, like, choppiness in the image. Right. But if you were to go to a lower, if your device had a lower refresh rate, well, now uh, I'm trying to interact with my environment uh, at the speed of movement, right? Yeah. Um, like, I'm moving and trying to interact with my environment, and the thing that I'm trying to interact with may just not be there by the time I process that information. Or it mm -hmm. may not be in the same spot. Yeah. Uh, within the image. So that's one of the limitations um, to the thermal, uh, you know, is refresh rate. Um, you know, you can buy top end thermal devices and have a really fast refresh rate um, and a fast, relatively fast processor, uh, but you're still kind of limited to that digital process versus um, an analog process where as soon as the image comes into the device it's presented to your eye with no mm -hmm. delay uh yeah. which is on the eye square side it is weird how that can work because you know you when i think of analog processes i don't always think of something you know analog versus digital for mm -hmm. example a lot of times i'll think of how thermal it's it's a digital image like you said it's similar in some rate, ways to like a tv in front of your face that you're yeah. looking at um whereas that's not the case with with your uh eye squared night vision devices but both still use a battery, and both mm -hmm. basically go completely black. You can't see anything if the battery dies. Yeah, which is funny, yeah. you know, because I think of like the optics that we sell that go on, you know, a traditional daytime optic rifle scope. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's that's analog to me. Yeah, and if, well, you know, and it still always works even if a battery goes and dead. And so, but if of you course. think of like an I squared, uh, like NVG tube, is uh, very similar to like an old school, uh, like vacuum tube. Um, so when I say analog, I mean, there isn't like a little computer that runs in there, right? Like it's still presenting an image on a phosphor screen. So it's still kind of a screen, um, you know, like comparison to TV. And when we talk about like quality, um, uh, you know, like, 
uh, SNR and those sorts of things. We'll talk about uh, resolution in regards to screens and, and that sort of thing. But um, there is a uh, there is no like little computer in there that, yeah. that works to present that information. Uh, whereas on the thermal side, um, there is some level of computing process to take that information and turn it into a usable image presented on, you know, in front of your face. Um, and so there can be delays. Um, older units uh, that had uh, slower refresh rates are worse. Um, the technology has come, uh, you know, made tremendous strides uh, recently. Um, and so even like some older units that I've used um, are nowhere near as nice as some of the units that I have played with more recently or videos that I see online. Um, you know, there's a ton of hunting media out there uh, right. using thermals. Um, and some of the images are amazing uh, of what uh, units can do. Now, I will say like, I think some of those are filmed um, in very, very cold temperatures where your contrast is really high. Oh, so it makes everything um, And so look. it's like all you can see is the thermal image. You can't see what ambient is. And you're like, man, that is an amazing image. Like, uh, it, it just blows my mind. And then you really kind of pay attention. It's like, oh, you're hunting in snow. Um, mm. And so this warm thing really pops because the temperature difference is even greater than, say, a uh, you know, 98 degree animal in 75 or 80 degree weather. Sure. Cause it's a 98 degree animal in like 10 degree weather. You yeah. Know? Um, so the Easier contrast the is sensor to pick up. Yeah. That's yeah. like the equivalent of when you go into a store and you're looking at a, a, a lower, more entry level optic compared to a super high end optic, but it's noon on a bluebird sunny day yeah. and you're under fluorescent lights in yeah. a store. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Okay. So, with these with these devices, I think, um, you know, I see all kinds of different prices with thermal devices. Like, you can get a thermal device that's less than $1,000 even. Mm -hmm. Whereas with night vision devices, they seem to be just pretty steady. You're paying, you're paying four figures for them. Um, you know, what do you, what do you think there? Is it kind of one of those things where... Um, you know, can you get thermal for a little less money? Or when you actually factor in trying to liken quality for quality, like I'm going to get a high quality thermal image imaging device that I can see. It sounds funny to say see as well with as I could with the, you know, with the night vision device. But yeah, so I think um, the spectrum of thermal uh, is a little cloudier, maybe, um, than with. Uh, I squared stuff. So if you look at I squared stuff, you kind of have like um, con very consumer focused items, right? Things that are maybe handheld only devices. They're not intended to be mounted to a helmet. Um, they don't use uh, mil spec size tubes. Um, so tubes that would work in a PVS 14 housing uh, or even a, a PVS 7 housing. Um, and uh, so you have like stuff that's very focused at like a hunter that's just trying to either get to uh, a spot where he's going to hunt. So he's he just needs a little bit of aid to see in those um, like early morning hours. Uh, or maybe he's just doing some observation stuff um, in order to pick up and gather information about the environment that he's in, but not really interact with it. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that stuff is... You know, it's uh, it's very easy to pick out and separate, I feel like, from, like, you know, modern um, military-grade night vision on the I-squared side. Yeah. Whereas when you look at um, the thermal side, like, uh, you can find some stuff that has very low refresh rate. Um, the uh, resolution isn't that great. Um but similarly, it's sold uh, at a very inexpensive price point for simply like detecting something in your environment. But you're probably not going to want to use it to actively hunt, um, you know, particularly like coyotes or hogs. You know, uh, like it might aid somebody in picking up an animal um, in an environment where like their camouflage is just superior enough that they're going to have a hard time picking them up um as opposed to like hey i'm going to 
bolt this on a gun and I'm going to use it to actively hunt. Right. Um, so it's like the difference between just simply scanning your environment and having an awareness of what's out there versus trying to hunt something that's moving pretty fast. You know, mm. I mean, if you look at like coyotes, they're constantly on the move. Moving a lot, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so you need that higher refresh rate. Uh, you probably need a higher uh, resolution to make sure uh, that you're engaging the animal that you want instead of just knowing that there's something out there that's warm. Um, uh, and then uh, there's detection distance. So a lot of um, thermal optics will have a rating on them of detection distance. And you want, you know, a little maybe a little bit further detection distance so that you don't have to be right on top of them. Yeah, uh, potentially, you know, giving up the fact that you're there. Some of those thermals, they actually will will grade different distances, like you said, where there's okay, there's a distance where my sensor is yep. good enough that I can just tell that there is a warm object out there, and then it comes in to now I can tell maybe what type of species it is, and then there's a certain point where it comes in, and now I can identify yeah. it well enough that I know that's a coyote and not the neighbor's German short hair pointer, you know, or something like that. And unfortunately, like just in the last say year, um, there's been a number of cases of animals being shot under thermal, um, that were not appropriate, uh, to be shot. And I don't know how much of that's the inexperience of the user versus the trying to put a lower quality product into play. Um, uh, so like, did they have all the information they needed and they still made a bad decision or were they trying to use a sensor that wasn't giving them sufficient, uh, mm-hmm. information and, just kind of taking the and, and they were, you know, putting a shot out there and then, uh, not being aware of like, Hey, uh, you know, we shot a piece of livestock or a family pet or something like that instead of a, you know, coyote, um, right. or a pig or whatever, you know, yeah. hog. So but kind of back to the uh, to the price point that I was getting at there at the very beginning, it's, it seems like really if you want to get something that's at a high enough level that you're going to not just sort of like observe, but actually start using it to interact, quote unquote, I'll use that yeah. word, with the environment, <laughs> yeah. potentially with a firearm, uh, then either one of these is really going to be pretty, it's expensive. Yeah, I would say generally you're looking on the thermal side like five to 6,000 um, is a, a reasonable threshold um, to put on something that's capable of uh, actively hunting with it. Um, And then, you know, on the I squared side, um, like you think of uh, at a minimum, like a PVS 14 and a laser, and you're probably talking about the same price point Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and the kind of sky's the limit. uh, Yeah, you go really wild with these things. Yeah. I go back and forth all the time because I think, you know, I got some, uh, I got some I squared type night vision that I'm out on a helmet. And yeah, like you said, there's other things that go with it. Cause I got the helmet. I had to get the mount. Uh, mm-hmm. I had to get the, the night vision device themselves. I got a bunch of batteries, et cetera, et cetera. And I got those and I'm like, man, this is sweet. You know, I can use this with the laser I got for my, my AR and I can shoot at night, stuff like that. And I'm thinking, yeah, I can use this while I'm hunting. But then I see people doing the whole thermal thing. And I'm like, well, shoot, did I just spend all this money on this? And now I, I should have spent money on the thermal. But then I know that at the same time, there's limitations to the thermal side of things, too. And I really like navigating around, like, at night with yeah. night vision on. It's really simple because I can just see everything. If you got, you know, uh, a, a little IR flash like like one of the Surefire Vampires or something like mm-hmm. that, you can point it at the ground, not be messing with or overwhelming your night vision and you're and you're seeing everything clear as day. Yeah. But then if you set up and you're trying to look for a critter, then you're you're at the same disadvantage you maybe were before with with your naked eye in daytime, like you said with the camouflage thing. And so there's I go back and forth. I don't know why. That's kind of part of the reason we're yeah. doing this podcast here because I think other people are in the same boat and if you're spending all that money, you're like, "Shoot. I'd love to just get one." The best answer is get them both. Yeah, best answer is to get them both <laughs> and probably stack multiple capabilities together. So, um, like behind me, I have a set of dual tube night vision. Yeah, here, pull uh, that out. We've and, got, if you're um, watching on YouTube, uh, the video, you can see this, what we got here. Yeah, so this is a set of dual tube night vision that we have uh, here at Edge. And then uh, in my other hand is a clip on thermal imager. Um, and so it will go on over one side of the uh, 
This is pretty cool. Objective lens. And it presents an image within. So it goes on like that and then has a little clamp that holds it in place. Um, and it presents a thermal image into my I square device. Right. So um, I get the best of both worlds um, on the plus side. Uh, I can see a little bit of thermal and I'm just going to leave that. Uh, it yeah, it can be a little challenging to get uh, clamped on. Uh, but um, the, you know, good solid sensor like this is an e Cody. So um, it's one of the you know latest and greatest models available on the commercial market. Um, and it presents a thermal image into one side of my night vision. So a cool thing is that I can use all the benefits of I squared. So I can run a laser. Um, I can uh, put extra light out into the environment. I can pick up all the different light sources. But then I have uh, all the ability to pick up thermal, um, you know, plug or piped right into to the viewable side uh, of my uh, I squared device. When you're shooting with an E Cody device on your on your night vision, there when you're shooting and you use that laser and everything, there's not a section of your night vision that's now occluded from doing night vision things, right? Like By the, the E-Cody? Yeah. No. So, if so you think everything, about... your whole <clears throat> screen is still yep. usable. It's just that now also thermal is overlaid over it. So it really yeah, is it's like a heads-up display, basically. Okay, um, so cool. I'm not, nothing's really blocked. Um, so very similar, like if I had a speck of uh, dust on the objective lens of a binocular, uh, you know, Whatever I'm focused at is what I see. I don't see that speck of dust. Right. Right. Even yeah. if I had a pretty gnarly scratch on my objective lens, I'm probably not going to see that. I'm going to see whatever I, I'm focused at. So okay. similarly, this little uh, projection um, that sits in front of the object objective lens of the I squared device, I don't even notice it. What yeah. I see is uh, like a heads up display, um, you know, a thermal overlay over the I squared image. Um, and so if I were to like pan across an area and I don't see nothing jumps out a high contrast on the I squared image, uh, but it's, you know, a, a hot or cold, you know, like, you know, contrasting uh, temperature, um, then I would see that as a, you know, lighted display um, through the I squared image. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing is I can adjust the intensity of that image um, so I can make it like really bright so it stands out and pops um, or if there's a lot of information that's coming into the thermal I can dim it down so that I don't it's not distracting um, I can even change it from like outline uh, or uh, like traditional thermal where you see uh, you know the entire object that's warm uh, would, would show up uh, and there's a lot of different things that you can kind of play around to make it a more usable image right um, so I could use those two together, like I talked about stacking capabilities. Um, and then... <clears throat> As usual, the best way to start eliminating <laughs> trade-offs is to just keep spending more and yeah, more money. Yeah, just keep throwing money at it. Yeah. Um, and then I have a device here, uh, which is an integrated uh, thermal site. So it doesn't clip on with a daytime device. It has a reticle built into it. Um, oh, because sometimes, sometimes there are thermals and, and regular night vision <coughs> the I squared devices that would clip on in front yep. of, a, of a regular rifle scope or optic. So this PVS-30, uh, in my other hand, um, is a, a clip-on I squared device. So it would clip on in front of a daytime scope. Uh, where I could use like the full range of, or in theory, the full range of magnification. It has limits of, of usable range. Uh, but, um, you know, it is an I squared device, so it's going to gather information uh, where it brings in photons and, and amplifies them. Um, I may still need to use uh, an illuminator with this, um, but it's a, a great tool. Uh, or then I can use. Uh, this guy, uh, where um, it has a reticle built in, um, and it's purely thermal. So mm -hmm. stick this on a gun. Um, if I was going to use this setup together, uh, I would probably you know, stick this uh, on a gun that has a, a laser. Um, and then I can point stuff out to other people. Um, and I can pick it up with my I squared device. I can interact with my environment with the I squared device. I still have thermal cueing. So if I see something in that little sensor, uh, that's the Cody, the clip on thermal, um, I can put my gun up, uh, go off of I squared and look through this. And now I can see like a much better detailed image right. that has, 
I have much greater range than that clip-on thermal imager. Or you use pretty much any of these separate by yeah. themselves, right? So, um, like set up a, a uh, hide site, um, you know, where you know animals are going to be, um, either because you've, you know, put something down there to encourage them to be there, uh, or you just know that they they come in and use this guy by himself, uh, wait till they show up, and it's your sighting, you know, detection sighting, everything all built into one. Right. So now you get something like that, you're you're marrying a gun to being your night gun. Yeah. How do you sight those in? Like uh, so it has a zero, in, like this one, um, as part of the menu, uh, you can zero it. So you bolt it onto the gun, make sure that it's securely installed. Um, and then you would need to create a target that has uh, heat differential, right? Right, yeah. Um, so some people... Because if you just stick paper up, you're not really going to see... Yeah, anything. so... Um, some people will use things like uh, those instant hand warmers um, and use that. Um, basically, anything that creates a, a differential of heat. So if it's something that's that's cold, um, it'll show up, or ideally something that's hot, it'll yeah. show up. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would rather have something that's putting off heat versus being like a, a cooler um, thing. Uh, I feel like the you know, hotter signature, you know, really pops uh, versus something that's a little bit cooler than the environment for, for zeroing purposes. Sure. sure. Yeah. But you can't, like, read your paper that you're shooting at with no. your thermal. Uh -uh. That's one of the weird things. Yeah. So you would need to, like, shoot, go down and check it. Um, and hope and, and like use some sort of method to make sure you're aiming at the center of the rectangle piece of paper or something like that. Yeah. So, right? I mean, similar to the way we zero night vision devices, we put a little, little strip of, uh, reflective tape, mm -hmm. um, and we put it in the middle of the target and then we make adjustments until we're, we're on that reflective tape. Um, or if we're doing a parallel zero, uh, just, just next to it. Um, and so similarly with this, we would you know, set up uh, a small heat source on the target. Oh, I, okay, and then yeah, we yeah. would basically, you know, make adjustments uh, to the windage and elevation until we're putting rounds into that heat That's source. That's where the hand warmer comes into play. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm following now. Yep. Got it, got it. Yeah, they are they are very interesting pieces of equipment. And I, I think that a lot of people oftentimes, they get hung up on figuring out, like they know they want to do it. They, you know, they know I want to get... I want to hunt at night. I want to shoot at night. Shooting at night is a ton of fun, and of course, it could have some very practical applications if uh, if you find yourself in that situation. Yeah. But you know, I think they think I want to get it, but I don't know which one to get. And and like I said, I'm I was totally in this boat where I'm like probably not going to get both. You know, yeah. because that's just or at least not immediately. Maybe you know you you look at it as an investment over time or something where you're building out your arsenal over time. But, but right away, you know, figuring out which one you're going to get. What would you say, Mike, for for you? Like, if you're going to – I'm going to put you on the spot because yeah. that's that's what we do. Now you're on a <laughs> podcast, so you're an entertainer. you got to be put on the spot yeah. from time to time. For somebody who is new to this, they've only ever shot daytime before, what would you recommend that they do? Let's say they kind of they kind of want to do a little bit of, you know, I want to shoot a little with my AR at yeah. night. I want to train up that a little bit, and I want to potentially take this out hunting. So it pains me because I'm very much an I squared guy. Like I'm I very know. heavily invested in I squared. Love the lasers. Yeah, love um, the I love the various different tubes. I I think I squared gets you to where you want to be, and thermal helps you to make the shot. Okay. So from that perspective, if you don't have like a a need to be in the dark to get to where you want to be, mm -hmm. right? So, like, if I don't need to be in the dark to get to my hide site, like, I can turn on even, like, a red lens flashlight or, or a very, you know, minimalist light source that's viz um, to get to where I want to set up to hunt. Thermal is is the better option to, to make the shot. I think you're probably right. So it, it you seems know. like you can. It seems like as a regular, uh, everyday, ordinary citizen, yeah. you have more use with the thermal right away than you do with night vision. Of course, there's going to be yeah. people who disagree with me that because I'm throwing a blanket statement out there, and everybody's going to have very niche uh, sort of uh, applications where night vision would be yeah. better. But it seems like overall, you know, especially with all the hunting opportunities with hog hunting being so big in various different states and coyote hunting being a thing pretty much anywhere you go. Yeah. 
you can you can get it and you can use it like that. But man, night vision's fun though. It is. It is. Um, I love I squared stuff, and uh, there's so many activities that you can use it for. Uh, but like when it comes down to actually making that shot um, and detecting animals uh, like out in the wild, I think thermal is a, a huge capability mm -hmm. um, and is awesome. So uh, long story short, get both. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you got to start with one and that's your that's your focus, like if you want to go out and do, you know, some predator hunting um, or you, you know, want to take some hogs, uh, right. like I think thermals where it's at for you. I like it. Yeah. I like it. So there you have it. That's a little rundown on your I squared. We'll call it, uh, again, I, I, you brought that in. I just, I've never referred to it as that cause I just call yeah. it night vision, but I realize, uh, I realize night vision could just, it's a general statement could mean a lot of things, but your traditional night vision devices versus thermal, let us know what you think. Also, since we have Mike here and since we have access to a lot of really cool tools, as you can see, uh, let us know what you want to hear about these various different types of devices in some future episodes. This, this whole series will be a thing. We'll have Mike back on. We'll talk about more specific, uh, different this versus that, or just use cases and, and some training stuff with it as well. And I did mention that we'd bring it up here in, uh, at the end of the podcast, but of course we do have a night vision carbine class right after Mike got done saying you should get thermal first. You can come out. If you don't have night vision yet, we train on the I-squared type stuff, helmet-mounted, binocular night vision. Even if you don't have it, you can come sign up for the class. Have some experience shooting carbine in daytime first. That, that is key because if you, don't have, if you don't have that experience and you don't have experience with night vision, it's going to be completely overwhelming. But uh, if you got that experience down, show up, bring your gun, bring some ammo. We'll stick the laser on it. We'll stick the helmet on your head with the mount, with the binocular night vision, just like my cat here. It's DTNVS stuff, really awesome. And we'll train you how to use that specifically. And it's a ton of fun. So be looking out on our website, vortexedge.com, for more of those classes that you can sign up for. Hopefully by the time we release this, they're not already all filled up, but we will be releasing more as the months go on. So, so definitely stay tuned. All right. I think right. that does it. Sounds good. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Catch you on the next one. That's a wrap, everybody. Hope you like this topic. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and of course, subscribe right here because there's going to be plenty more to come. If there's topics you'd like to hear us go over on the Vortex Edge podcast in the future, you can let us know by commenting below or hitting us up on Instagram, which is at Vortex Edge. We'd love to hear your suggestions so we can be bringing you the kind of episodes and topics that you want to hear. Otherwise, we'll be seeing you on a future episode. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Bye.